Mexico suffered an enormous amount of political instability after independence from Spain in 1821, and this was going to have strong economic repercussions. Just to give you an idea of what we're talking about, between 1821 and 1880, there were 61 Mexican presidents. As a point of comparison, in the United States over that same period, there were 15. 20 of these 61 presidents were removed by unconstitutional means, such as coup d'etat. And eight individuals served as president multiple non-consecutive times. Lopez de Santa Ana, for instance, topped the list at 11 times. Not surprisingly, the political instability was not limited to the chief executive. Platt notes that the Mexican Finance Ministry was directed by no less than 112 persons successively between 1830 and 1863. Mexico really suffered from a vicious cycle in the fact that the more unstable it was, the less likely it was to be able to tax, and the less likely it was able to tax, the more unstable it was. For instance, attempts to raise taxes often resulted in regional revolt, the most famous being the Texas Revolt in 1836. Even facing war, the Mexican elites refused to pay taxes. Some examples. In 1829, the Mexican government tried to raise taxes to prevent a potential invasion by Spain. These proposals were roundly defeated, and the government was actually overthrown. This was to recur. Same thing happened in the Pastry War with France in 1838. And in 1847, U.S. troops were actually marching towards Mexico City, and the government was desperately trying to find money. As Barbara Tenenbaum notes, the government frantically negotiated with the church and domestic lenders for funds. So the government had no consistent revenue, was unable to provide even basic public services. Things like road maintenance, postal services had to be contracted out to private parties. They tried establishing a development bank, but it have to, ended up having to close after 12 years when the government seized the money to give to the army instead. So much political turnover resulted in inconsistent policies. Tariff rates were often higher than the value of the good itself, even though there was no real industry to protect. Rates bore little relationship to reality. Valuations were outdated and unsystematic. Heath notes that tariff legislation changed with bewildering frequency, as successive governments and their even more transient finance ministers strove frantically to increase revenue, fight the evils of the contraband system, and placate whichever private interest looked most immediately threatening or promising. Who, in fact, was setting policy? It wasn't always clear. The tariffs were supposedly set by the federal government, but regional politicians acted arbitrarily and were often backed up by regional militias. Desperate for cash, regional governments often took over customs houses to help fund their militias. The economic effects of this, of course, is that this kind of inconsistency generates a huge amount of uncertainty. This is harmful to both domestic and foreign direct investment. Investors don't want to put their money in a country where they're not sure who's going to be the next government or what the policies are going to be.